What's up beautiful people, it's Inara and welcome to the channel. Today we have this very interesting video from Ben Shapiro and it's titled Viral Country Song Hits Number One. Also, I'm excited to check this one of the year with Ben Shapiro, I've got to say. Let's check it out. Time for some things I like and then some things that I hate. So, things that I like. So, Rich Men North of Richmond has now debuted at number one at the top of the Billboard charts. Despite the media's rage over an unknown musician becoming a very, very famous person for writing a song that is very critical of the governmental left. It's doing really, really well. Now, again, it is amazing how everybody's in favor of a rags to riches story in music, so long as it's not, you know, an out-of-work miner. If it's an out-of-work miner, like a person who mines the earth, then uh, that person's bad, and we should, we should have no sympathy for this person. According to the New York Times, Rich Men North of Richmond, an independently released track by a little-known performer billed as Oliver Anthony Music, became the number one song in the United States at top hits by superstars like Taylor Swift, Morgan Wallen, and Olivia Rodrigo. The song was uploaded to YouTube just two weeks ago. It caught fire with conservative commentators, including Matt Walsh and Laura Ingram, who described it as an authentic expression of working class struggle. Now, some critics winced at anti-welfare sentiments that seemed to hark back to the Reagan era. Oh my God, you're not allowed to be anti-welfare, guys. Stop being anti-welfare or we're not going to allow you, a working class person, to have a successful song. You have to be pro-welfare in order for this to work. Or presumably you have to cut a song about the magic of transgenderism or something. That, that, that is the best way to get a song to, uh, to hit number one and be feeded by the New York Times at the same time. Rich Men shoots to the top of Billboard's Hot 100 single chart with 17.5 million streams and 147,000 downloads, according to tracking service Illuminate. After Jason Aldean's Try That in a Small Town, it is the second country song in less than a month to reach number mm. one after stirring political controversy and sparking download sales. It's also the first time that an artist has ever made a debut at number one on the Hot 100 without any prior chart history in any form. Yeah. So that is, um, you know, again, it, speaks volumes. it shows that when conservatives and uh, people who are not in the cultural mainstream flex their market power, they are able to make an outsized cultural influence. The song is certainly worth the listen. Uh, the, mm -hmm. the, it, if you recall back to the early days of Trumpism, it's really kind of fascinating. Go, think back to like 2015, 2016, when Trump was mm -hmm. really gaining a lot of street credence and, and credibility and he was picking up huge support. There were all these pieces after Trump won in 2017 mm -hmm. about like, who are these people who voted for Trump? And they sent reporters from big cities into the wilds of like Iowa to discuss with the regular folk mm -hmm. as though they were Steve Irwin checking out some strange form of kangaroo. What exactly these weirdos thought? And they wanted to know for a moment, for a brief moment in time. This is when books like J.D. Vance's Hillbilly Elegy started making inroads where people were like, oh, maybe these people think differently than we do. Maybe they have certain moral values that we don't hold. Mm. Maybe, they, maybe they are afraid of the peculiar morality that we are bringing to them that suggests that men can be women, women can be men, and that mm. basically individual subjectivism is the height of human experience. And then it all went away. Then it all went away. Within about six months, it was like, no, no, no. Trump won because of Russia. It wasn't because there's any cultural moment that we're missing here, it's because of Russia. Well, every time one of these kind of cultural moments reaches up and grabs the left, they freak out. Mm -hmm. And instead of trying to understand where is rich men north of Richmond coming from, what does this mean? Instead of that, they just freak out and they're like, oh my God, look at these hicks. These crazy hicks who like stuff like this. How dare they? We must have the absolutely anti-melodic warblings of like Rihanna. We, we need them. We need, we need people gyrating on the screen. That's the only way that we can have a major hit. It was just a guy with a man joke playing about how, you know, his life is tough because it turns out too much of his money is being taken away from him. We can't have that. That's that's super duper bad. So uh, good once again for Oliver Anthony. Good for rich men north of Richmond. Um, I, I couldn't be more pleased about uh, that that song's continued durability in the marketplace. Well, if you are Donald Trump and there's a great way for you to, you know, quash all talk about a debate where you're not going to be, here's a great way. Show up for your arrest in Fulton County, Georgia. So Again, dude has impeccable time. And you have to say that Donald Trump knows how to work a camera. That is for damn sure. So according to CNN, Donald Trump plans to turn himself in and be processed at the Fulton County Jail on Thursday following his agreement earlier Monday to a $200,000 bond and other release conditions. I'll be going to Atlanta, Georgia on Thursday to be arrested, Trump wrote on Truth so Social. So apparently several co-defendants in the Georgia racketeering case have also agreed to the terms of their bond agreements with the DA's office. Trump's lawyers, Jennifer Little, Drew Fining, and Marissa Goldberg, met with the DA's office on Monday before the details of the bond agreement were released. Other Trump lawyers have been working behind the scenes on the approach to the bond. The release conditions outlined in Trump's bond order are more extensive than those laid out in the others approved earlier Monday in the case. According to the judge, quote, the defendant shall perform no act to intimidate any person known to him or her to be a co-defendant or witness in this case or to otherwise obstruct the administration of justice. The above shall include, but are not limited to, posts on social media or reposts of posts made by another individual on social media. So in other words, if Donald Trump retweets something 
threatening Rudy Giuliani or ripping on Rudy Giuliani or something, then theoretically they could haul him back to jail. They could say you have violated your bond. Wow. So his team is saying this is a violation of free speech. I should be allowed to say basically what I want because your interpretation of intimidation of witness might just be me, my, my open and honest take on what's mm. going on with co-defendants. That seems like fairly reasonable, actually. This is the highest bond of any of the defendants, which, again, is sort of strange given the fact that Donald Trump is the least likely person in human history to abscond from justice. I don't, I don't even understand the logic that Donald Trump is going to be running away from the, the country. What, 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 is, what is even happening? It's so funny. And so, so Donald Trump actually put out what was a very, very funny statement uh, on this. He said, the failed district attorney of Fulton County, Fannie Willis, insisted on a $200,000 bond for me. I assume, therefore, she thought I was a flight risk. I'd fly far, far away. Maybe to Russia, Russia, Russia. Share a gold dome suite with Vladimir. Never to be seen or heard from again. Would I be able to take my very understated airplane with the gold Trump affixed for all to see? Probably not. I'd be much better offline commercial. I'm sure nobody would recognize me. <laughs> I mean, dude's funny. I mean, you got to say this. For, Donald Trump is a funny, funny man. That is some funny stuff right there. So, um, you know, Donald Trump, obviously him showing up in court in Atlanta is going to be the coverage of the day. So it almost doesn't matter what happens in the Republican debate, barring some sort of cataclysmic circumstance. Oh my God. Let's just talk about how someone who nobody has heard of, Oliver Anthony, just topped the charts. Like that speaks volume and that speaks a lot. Like it means that um, lots of people are listening and um, it, he sang the song to the right audience and um, the right audience paid attention, listened to the song, regardless of what you believe or regardless of who you support the message is for every and anybody not just some particular people a little group of people alone and i i respect that a lot because you don't see that especially in this um in the music industry you don't see that it's amazing it's beautiful that uh he wrote the song out of his heart and um he was able to connect and speak the right message and deliver it to the right people. It speaks so much volume. And um, for this, for it to even top the chart, millions of people are listening to the song, sharing their stories. I mean, it's amazing, it's beautiful. But yeah, I really love to hear from you. What are your thoughts about Oliver Anthony? Um, what was your first impression when you heard the song? What was it like that um, you felt when you listened to the song? I would really love to hear from you. You can share your beautiful story in any comment down below. You can also share other useful information you think might be really helpful. And until next time, see you in the next video.